I'm Kerry Martin, and this is the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast for Tuesday, August 27th of 2019. Welcome to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, a look at the latest news in Louisiana agriculture. Now, here's the host of the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, Carrie Martin. The LSU Ag Center's Dean Lee Research Center outside of Alexandria is now the farthest north location for sugarcane planting in the world. We'll talk with LSU Ag Center sugarcane specialist Ken Gravois more about that later in the podcast. But first, here's a look at news headlines. The trade agreement announced over the weekend between the U.S. and Japan should close the tariff gap created when President Trump removed the U.S. from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Details have yet to be announced, but agriculture groups expect the tariff levels to be comparable to those of other nations who continued the TPP negotiations without the United States. U.S. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue says the U.S.-Japan trade deal is good for American agriculture. Frankly, it's good for agriculture. We didn't get everything we want, but that's the way trade negotiations do. During a trip to Virginia, Secretary Perdue said that some commodities will fare better than others. Rice, which is not too big here in Virginia, is probably not going to be uh, fare very well. That's unfortunate in Arkansas and Louisiana and those areas, but obviously beef and wheat and uh, other crops such as corn that you mentioned will do very well. President Trump announced the deal at the G7 summit in France. USDA released its latest crop progress and condition report yesterday showing the nation's soybean crop condition ratings up slightly. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey. Inching upward for the week ending August 25th, now 55% good to excellent, 13% very poor to poor. A week ago those numbers were 53% and 14% respectively. Rippey also took a look at the latest rice crop progress numbers. The rice crop finally almost all headed out, 96% one point behind the five-year average, two points behind last year. And harvest is now getting underway in the Delta states to go along with the western Gulf Coast region. Nationally, 15% of the rice harvested by August 25th, five-year average 18%, last year 19%. Looking at the Louisiana Crop Progress and Condition Report, it shows that soybean harvest now getting underway, but we are behind the five-year average pace. The report shows soybean harvest now 5% complete. The average pace for this time of year is 15%. Sugarcane planting moving forward as well. We're 24% done planting cane. That is behind the five-year average of 34%. As far as the Louisiana cotton crop is concerned, we have 1% opening bowls, 59% setting bowls, 93% of the cotton crop is squaring. Condition ratings for soybeans, we're looking at 9% excellent, 44% good, 39% fair, and 8% poor to very poor. Cotton conditions, 11% excellent, 57% good, 29% fair, and 3% poor to very poor. And sugarcane ratings stack up like this, 6% excellent, 53% good, 32% fair, and 9% rated poor to very poor. Weeds have been a big problem in Louisiana crop fields this year. They aren't going away, but there are some effective tools available for farmers. Don Molino reports. LSU Ag Center Weed Scientist Dr. Donnie Miller at the St. Joe Research Station in northeast Louisiana is conducting research funded by the Louisiana Soybean Grain Research and Promotion Board centering on effective weed management programs. From both a control standpoint and a profitability standpoint, this year... We have focused a good deal on the Enlist soybean system, which is a new technology that has been developed, which allows for a new 2,4-D formulation, 2,4-D choline, to be applied over the top of soybean. We have focused a lot on that system this year because the technology had been held up due to uh, not receiving all the approvals for export. Uh, That has been cleared. 
So now producers are able to use. The technology has looked great in our research programs, uh, very effective on a lot of the glyphosate-resistant weeds that exist, pigweed and weeds such as that. We've looked at, like I said, a lot of the uh, efficacy programs, the weeds, which are common in northeast Louisiana, how effective the technology is on those weeds. Miller points out weed resistance is not going away. We want to be able to have as many weapons as we can to fight the resistance. So we want to have people effectively use this technology just as effective as it needs to be so that we're not developing resistance to these technologies. And once we do that and the PPO resistance take hold and the glyphosate resistance, we're just running out of options because a lot of the companies have gone through the period of layoffs and not putting as much money in develop when the Roundup Ready programs became commercialized and just overtook everything. Large part of the acreage on a number of crops, so a lot less money was put into the development of newer modes of action. We're starting to see that sort of swing back now with the resistance issues, but we want to make sure that when we have effective technology such as the Enlist system, we want to make sure that we can get as long a use out of them as we can by being good stewards with this herbicide. I'm Don Molino on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. A group of Kansas corn farmers got a close-up look at sugar cane planting in Louisiana recently. West Baton Rouge Parish cane growers Bobby and Melissa Morris hosted the Kansas group on their farm. Kansas corn grower Stacy Mayo Martinez says the tour was fascinating. It's phenomenal. We first of all we enjoyed dinner last night with Melissa's family, and they were wonderful to host us. Got to talk ahead of time. Um, farmers are farmers. They always want to learn. They want to know about soil type. They want to know about tillage practices, about planting. We talked a lot about um, handling employees. Um, just all. It depends on where. It does no matter where you are, they're challenge, uh, facing the same challenges. We talked about weather. Um, and it's great to see them as young producers and kind of the, the what they're up against and a lot of the same things when it comes down to it or what our farmers are up against in Kansas. Kansas farmer Hayes Kelman says he was definitely not in Kansas anymore. Well, there's, there's similarities in every different crop. You know, the, the farmer's still a farmer no matter what we're growing. Um, but the sugar cane is, is a whole other experience for us. I mean, this is nothing like what our, what our planting season is like. The tour was sponsored by the Kansas Corn Check. Off. Remember, you can catch all of the latest news in Louisiana agriculture on our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.com. We update it every weekday with all the latest news and happenings right here in our state. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our daily e-newsletter. There's a button right in the middle of the page. Click that button, put in your name and email address. We'll send you our daily e-newsletter called The Daily Voice right to your inbox 5 a.m. every morning with all the latest news in Louisiana agriculture. Now let's look at the markets on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. The soybean market closed lower, getting back much of the gains that we saw on Monday, while there's still no life in the corn market. Grayson Close is a grain marketing specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. Soybeans are lower again today after being up yesterday. Corn's just kind of hanging steady right now. Uh, The USDA doing the crop report yesterday at 3 o'clock. Both good to excellent conditions went up for corn and beans. Beans up 2% on the rains that had fallen over the past week and weekend. So it's just going to... I want to show you that the trade's taking the rain makes grain attitude. And until we get any kind of production scare, I think this is probably where we'll trade at and what the numbers the USDA will use as far as carryouts and production. Uh, we did have a handshake deal with Japan announced uh, at, the end, late, at the end of last week at the G7 summit. So that's good news, and hopefully that puts more pressure on China to come to the table and make an agreement. Grain marketer Grayson Close. September soybeans down seven and a half, closing at eight forty six and a quarter. November beans down eight cents, eight fifty nine and a quarter. Corn was slightly lower. September corn down one and a half, three fifty seven. December corn down two, three sixty six and a quarter. September wheat up three quarters, closing at four seventy three and three quarters. We had a lower close in the rough rice market. September rice down seven at eleven fifteen a hundredweight. November rice down seven, closing at eleven forty five and a half. We had a narrowly mixed close in the cotton market. The nearby October was down twelve points, fifty seven fifty four. New crop December cotton up twelve, closing at fifty seven ninety two. November sugar down one point at twenty five point seventy five cents. 
at the Kinder Livestock Auction, Kinder, Louisiana, this week. Two to three hundred pound steers bought a dollar twenty-five to two dollars a pound. Three to four weight steers a dollar ten to a dollar eighty-five. Four to five hundred pounders brought a dollar to a dollar sixty a pound. Five to six weight steers ninety cents to a dollar forty-four. With six to seven weight steers bringing eighty cents to a dollar thirty-two a pound. Bred cows range from a low of four hundred dollars to a high of eleven fifty a head. Cow calf pairs brought five hundred to twelve fifty a pair. On the futures market, lower prices with October live cattle down a dollar twenty two ninety nine seventy seven. September feeder cattle down two twenty two one thirty three seventy seven. October feeders down a dollar eighty seven at one thirty two fifty. The LSU Ag Center's Dean Lee Research Center outside of Alexandria is now the farthest north location for sugarcane planting in the world. LSU Ag Center sugarcane specialist Ken Gravois will join us next to talk more about the work being done at Dean Lee on behalf of sugarcane growers in central Louisiana. That's coming up next on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. As the old saying goes, close only counts in horseshoes. So why take the chance with weather information when it comes to critical decisions with your fields? It's time to experience pinpoint field-level forecasts that are 40% more accurate than the competition. Experience the DTN Ag Weather Station. With this level of information, you'll know exactly what's happening at any time in your actual fields. This allows you to plant, spray, and harvest with a new degree of precision. Head to DTN.com today to learn more. The Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Sugarcane research is moving north. The Dean Lee Research Center outside of Alexandria, now the farthest north location for sugarcane planting in the world, as scientists try to test the limits of that crop. LSU Ag Center sugarcane specialist Ken Gravois visited with our friend Jeff Palermo at the Louisiana Radio Network about this new research and what it could mean for sugarcane in central Louisiana. Here's Jeff Palermo with Ken Gravois. Kenneth Gravois, who is the um, LSU Ag Center sugarcane specialist. And uh, I understand a project is underway uh, through the LSU Ag Center to see just how, just to see if sugarcane uh, can be grown in uh, central Louisiana. I guess LeCount right now is as far north as it gets, not only in Louisiana, but worldwide. Is that correct? Yeah, so we're we're seeing a trend in our sugarcane acreage increasing further west and further north. So right now, there's sugarcane within four or five miles of Alexandria, and it's within that four or five mile range is right there near the uh, Dean Lee Experiment Station. So I'm working with Dr. Al Ogeron, who's really spearheading the project. We're also working with the American Sugarcane League scientists and USDA scientists to put a cold tolerance test at the Dean Lee uh, Research Station. <clears throat> we have ongoing cold tolerance work, but it's conducted in HOMA. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost a guarantee that we'll get cold weather up in Alexandria. So we felt like uh, putting another location in, at the furthest point, northern point of our uh, 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 industry would certainly give us some useful data on cold tolerance of our current commercial varieties in Louisiana. Are there farmers there in Senla that have an interest, uh, Kenneth, uh, when it comes to growing sugar cane and, and want to see, I guess, more testing there? Sure, and, and, and really, that, that's how the project got started. Uh, we, uh, we sat down with a, a group of growers in, in central Louisiana in that Bunky, Cheneyville, uh, Lecompte area, and uh, we have variety testing ongoing in that area of the state. We also have some weed control work that's ongoing. Um, but since they are far north, uh, there was some real interest in getting a cold tolerance test uh, in that part of the world. So what we included in that test were uh, two or three of our most uh, uh, popular commercial varieties and the remaining uh, five or six varieties in the test 
or some advanced com- uh, near commercial varieties. They're still uh, in the experimental stage, but you know we want to know if we release a variety, what uh, the cold tolerance of that variety is going to be. So Dean Lee seemed to be a, a logical place uh, to do that work. What can this possibly uh, mean for the ag industry if it's uh, determined that, yeah, uh, sugar cane can survive uh, maybe some of the freezes that you see in uh, central Louisiana and what this might mean for the ag industry if we start seeing more sugar cane uh, planted in this area? Yeah, so, you know, we, you know, we ask a lot from our sugar cane varieties. Obviously, we ask for yield and early maturity, we ask for a long crop cycle. We want to grow as many stubble crops as we can. And one of the things that we ask out of our varieties is is just tolerance to cold weather. Um, uh, how well will a variety uh, tolerate a freeze? And, you know, freeze is something less than 32 degrees. We really need to get into that 26, 27 degree uh, range for an extended amount of time to see, you know, some effect. So we know we get that kind of weather, and the earlier we get that inside of the breeding program, uh, the better off we are. So information is power, and, you know, anytime we can get more information on a variety, it may help us determine whether we want to release that variety or recommend it in certain growing regions. Very good. I think that's it. One other question here, Kenneth. Uh, how long is this research expected to go? Oh, uh, we're going to plan a test every other year, so uh, we're kind of in it for the long haul. Um, it's a priority for the industry. The American Sugarcane League is on board. So, yep, we'll be up there for a while. And I find it interesting that LeCompte is the northernmost point in the world where sugarcane is grown. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, we re- you know, we really shouldn't be growing sugarcane. It's a tropical crop, and we're a temperate environment over here. But because of breeding, we have bred uh, cold tolerance and stress tolerance into these varieties, and it takes some of the risk of growing sugarcane up that way, it reduces that risk. So, yeah, research pays, uh, pays some dividends, and this is one of the things that we're hoping to see. All right, thanks, Kenneth. Appreciate your All right. Okay, Jeff. Thanks again to our friend Jeff Palermo at the Louisiana Radio Network for conducting that interview and sharing it with us here for today's podcast. Well, that wraps us up for the day. We'll see you tomorrow. But in the meantime, be sure to connect with us on social media. We're on both Facebook and Twitter. The handle is at Voice of LA Ag. Like our page, follow us. We keep that updated every day with all the latest news and happenings in Louisiana agriculture. We'll see you tomorrow on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Thanks for listening to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. This podcast is produced by Carrie Martin and the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation. For more information, be sure to check out our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.org and lafarmbureau.org.